After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus' ministry began after John was put in prison. John had always said he must increase and I must decrease, but I wonder if even he realized how suddenly and totally his ministry would decrease, would come to a dead end, he'd be in prison and stay there until his sordid death. And this of a man who was only 30 years old and had given his entire life to serving the Lord Jesus Christ. It seems meaningless, and it would be, if it weren't for the fact that a day is coming when all things will be made new and all injustice will be set right. And there are people whose lives are cut short, whose ministries are cut short, and it seems so unfair. But a day is coming. Now, if you have a red-letter Bible, you will see that in Gospel of Mark, the oldest gospel we have, the first recorded words of Jesus in his ministry were, The time has come. Jesus was acutely aware of his place in time and history. Paul said, When the set time was come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman. That time was set way back in the mists of eternity, and now the moment has come when eternity will meet with time, and it all comes in the form of a young travelling preacher in a little-known corner of the Roman Empire known as Galilee. The second sentence of Jesus in his ministry is, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Now, many years ago, I was part of a 30-something Bible study, and we were studying the book of Mark, and every week, three people were given three different verses for the coming week, and they were asked to meditate on those verses every day and then come back and tell us what happened. Well, one young woman was given this verse and when she came back she said to us, for four days I repented of anything I could think of that I needed to and there were things. But on the fifth day the penny dropped. What God was saying to me was repent for living as if the kingdom of God were not near, as if God were far away. I'm so sorry Cliff Richard recorded that song, God is watching us from a distance, because a song like that gets into our heads and we start to believe that God is at a distance. To live as if God were far away is something to repent of. And then we read, as Jesus walked beside the lake, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew. Come, follow me, he said. At once they left their nets and followed him. Later he saw James and his brother John and called them. Without delay, they left their father Zebedee and followed him. I was always bucked that one of the first four disciples was called Andrew. But the striking thing about this passage is the instant and immediate obedience of these two pairs of brothers to the call of Jesus. Peter and Andrew at once left their nets and followed him. The nets symbolized their career. How many people do you know who would leave their career at one call from Jesus? I've known some. And James and John left their father Zebedee. Zebedee represented family. How many people do you know who would leave family at a single call from Jesus? I have known some. And it wasn't much fun for Zebedee either, was it? This was a family business and now his two sons walk out on him. That's going to mess up his retirement plan. The name Zebedee means gift from God. Maybe this was his moment in which he gave his two sons as a gift to God. And so this remarkable occurrence of immediate and complete obedience, and although all of these men would demonstrate many failings, they never turned back on this calling and they followed him to death. There have been wonderful examples down of history of people demonstrating great obedience. I think of the 6th of June 1944 when young men, some of them not yet 20, crowded into landing craft and headed towards the beaches of Normandy. Some of those heading towards Omaha Beach said you could hear the sound of the bullets rattling on the doors of the landing craft and you knew that in moments those doors were going to open and they did open and out the men went. You can see the machine gun bullets hitting the water around them. And still they came, in obedience to their country's call, to rid the world of a terrible tyranny. But the greatest obedience of all was settled one night in a place called Gethsemane, where a young man said, Thy will be done. 
and within 12 hours he demonstrated just the extent of that obedience at a place called Calvary. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bowed and drenched in tears They laid Him down in Joseph's tomb The ancient seal by heaven Messiah's dear. 